I'm Christy and welcome back to my channel. So today is Monday, May 9th and it's the start of the historical romance readathon put on by Jess from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. So I've participated every single time they put on this readathon. It's one of my favorites that I always love to participate in. Um, for, the, for this readathon in particular, I don't usually have a TBR that goes along with their bingo board style um, prompt list. I usually just read whatever historical romances I'm wanting to get to and then afterwards I'll see what prompts those meet. I know I'm definitely going to be getting to The Lion's Lady by Julie Garwood. This is their group pick um, and so I'll definitely be getting to this one. I have read three Julie Garwoods in the past. I've read The Secret, The Bride, and The Wedding which I loved all of those so I can't wait to find out what this one's about. Another book I want to get to is Goddess of the Hunt by Tessa Dare. This is her very first book that she wrote and it's the first book in her Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy. This one is the book club pick this month for Ravished by Romance which is put on by Jess from Peace Love Books and Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers. And then I have also quite a few Beverly Jenkins that I'm hoping to get to during the readathon. I have Before the Dawn, Nighthawk, and then Through the Storm. So I love Beverly Jenkins. She's one of my favorite historical romance authors and I'm currently making my way through her backlist. I'm about halfway in and so these are the three I'm hoping to get to during the readathon. And then I'd also like to get to Mr. Impossible from Loretta Chase. This one takes place in Egypt and actually Jess from Peace Love Books sent this to me for Christmas last year so I know she loved this one and I think I will too. And then I'm also hoping to get to these two from Diana Quincy, The Viscount Man You Do It, the second book in her Clandestine Affairs series. And then The Marquess Makes His Move, which is the third book in the series. And this one is the book club pick this month for the Rake Appreciation Society put on by Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life and Jen from The Book Refuge. And I also have quite a few arcs that I want to try to get to as my ebook reads for the readathon. I have Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. This one is out on June 28th. I also have Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. This one is the third book in her Wild Winchester series, which I've been loving, and this one's out on July 12th. I have To Catch a Raven by Beverly Jenkins. This is the third book in her Women Who Dare series, and it is out August 23rd. I also have How the Wallflower Was Won. This is the second book in her Last Chance Scoundrel series, and it is out September 27th. I have Duke Most Wicked by Lenora Bell. This is the third book in her Wallflowers vs. Rogue series, and it is also out on September 27th. And then I also have three books out from the library right now. Um, the next three books in Elisa Braden's Rescued from Ruin series. So I already started the, I'm on book five. Um, it's called When a Girl Loves an Earl and I just started that one for the readathon. So, so far I'm really liking this one. Um, it starts off in Scotland and Jamie the hero is 16. He's a blacksmith's son and he just trained to become a stonecutter mason himself when somebody shows up and he is told that he's actually a, an earl now and so he's inherited a title that goes back like to his great 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 grandfather I think that he had no idea about and so his whole world is kind of um, shook up right now like he just wanted to be a stonemason and now all of a sudden like he's told he has to go to London and then we cut to 16 years later Jamie's been living in London and learning everything he needs to know about becoming an earl and um, taking care of his estate he currently has no wants to marry or ever get involved with anybody when he meets Viola um, Viola Darling, she is the heroine of the book and she immediately sets her sights on him. <laughs> she wants him for her own as soon as she sees him and she's kind of, she's being the pursuer right now and he's like trying to avoid her but also like super tempted to sneak a kiss from her. And so I'm already 50% into this one. Um, they actually already got married and they're back in Scotland where she's just finally realizing that he's Scottish and learning about his past when they're in her, his birthplace. And so far I really like this one. I always love like the hero who's you know like convinced he's gonna avoid marriage but of course you know the heroine's gonna come along and convince him otherwise and I can't wait to see how their relationship goes. So I just went to the thrift store that I just showed and saw those books inside that I left behind, but I did grab some books from there so I wanted to show what I got. Um, Scandal Takes the Stage. This is the second book in her Wicked Quills of London series. I've actually read book one so I do need to read book two so I'm glad to find this one. Also got this really shiny pretty Jane Ann Crince, the main attraction, and of course she writes um, 
as Amanda Quick for historicals as well. And this one actually had a step back, which is why I grabbed it. Super pretty. These two I grabbed. I already have copies of A Scandal Steel by Joanna Shoup. But of course, she's one of my favorites. And anytime I find a copy, um, I always pick them up and like, you know, give them away to friends or like I have friends who are looking for certain books of theirs. And then this Lisa Kleypas in Midnight Angel. I do have a copy of this one already. But again, like when I find nicer copies than maybe ones I already have on my shelves, I'll grab them. Or as well as um, I know friends who are looking for books. So I grab them for them. And this one has that gorgeous step back. I actually just read this series, The Stoke Hurst. Um, there's two books in the series. I just read them in April. Then this Lois Grayman, Grayman, um, The Princess and the Pirate. I thought that was just really, really pretty. Um, I haven't read this author before, but... I'm intrigued. I believe it's in Scotland. And then the last book I grabbed was this really pretty old school one. Um, Chance the Winds of Fortune, I believe is the title there, for Lori McBride. I love the dragon up here and the couple. And then it continues on to the back. This one was published in 1980. Look at that super tiny, tiny font. Um, so my friend Jen, um, Jen Book Magpie on Instagram, she actually uh, shared a couple books from this author before with me the covers and so I really loved this one and had to grab it when I saw it. Okay another day another car update I wanted to come on here and chat about a couple reads I've already finished now for the historical romance um, readathon going on right now. I first finished When a Girl Loves an Earl the fifth book in Elisa Braden's um, Rescued from Ruin series. I really loved this one. So I think I said before in the previous clip that I was at the 50% mark and they had already gotten married like they went to Scotland they get married and then um it was fun seeing Viola kind of like, you know, like she's been infatuated with this guy this whole time and like, I'm going to marry him. But then she comes to realize like she knows nothing about him. So when they're in Scotland, you know, she's like, oh, you're like, you're Scottish. Like, oh, you grew up in Scotland. Like, how did I not know this? And he's like, girl, we don't even know each other. <laughs> so it was fun seeing her like not only, you know, was she crushing on him before, but now she's actually like getting to know him and still liking him, which is a good thing because they're married. <laughs> and so it was fun seeing them um, go to his birthplace in Scotland um, where he grew up at and she meets his mom and sister and they become they like instantly connect and it was fun seeing all of that so then there's some moments from Jamie's past that come into play in the story like of course his you know the girl who got away um, is lives there still and so there's like some moments with that which you know a little bit of Viola seeing some things and you know leaving before she knows the full story and so then it was fun seeing um Jamie now he wants to like win her back and so he's trying to woo her like he it was really fun seeing him talk to one of his friends and he's like you know how do I get her how do I show her that I like her <laughs> you know love her and want her in my life and so his friend gives him some advice which was really fun to see the advice like it went horribly like when he tried to actually you know woo her and compliment her like it kind of went badly and so that was fun um to watch and I really just liked Jamie's character. Like he has a lot of hurts in his past. So it was nice seeing how he tackles some of that and how it comes into play with his relationship with Viola. I liked seeing both of their growth um, as characters throughout the book. I just really loved their story. And like I said, it's my favorite in the series so far. It's book five um, in the series. The whole series has been great, but this one was definitely my favorite. And then the second book I finished was a novella. It is 12 Nights as His Mistress. Um, it's like book 5.5 .5 in the Rescued from Room series by Elisa Braden. And this one I ended up giving three stars. It's probably my least favorite entry in this series so far. So it follows Charles and Julia and it's kind of like their second chance. They've liked each other in the past and they've had multiple moments of, you know, tr almost getting together or having like a kiss here. So now it's told partly in present day, which present day for their story is a hunting party, like a winter hunting party that they're both at. And so the story starts with Charles. He is convinced, like he loves Julia and wants to marry her. They've both been widowed in the past. Um, and now he thinks, you know, now is their chance to be together. And so when he goes to her and tells her like, now we can be together. She's like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to marry you, blah, blah, blah. So then it cuts to um, the hunting party and he finds out that she's going to be there and that he overhears like she's going to be marrying like a country squire so he's like um excuse me what like this guy's good enough for you but I'm not like I don't think so and so he um decides that he's going to have like one last chance to try to convince her that they belong together because he's like we belong together like why aren't you marrying me so he um has a proposition for her and it's that during the like hunting party that they're going to spend 12 nights together hence the name of the book <laughs> um he's like spend 12 nights in my bed and then at the end of it 
um, if you still are convinced and like, you know, can prove to me that we don't belong together, like after these 12, you know, Yemen nights together, then I will let you go and like we can go our separate ways. And yeah, I didn't really like how the story was told, like with the flashbacks. Um, it was kind of a lot for like a short novella. I also didn't like Julia. Like I didn't understand her character and I feel like, so we don't learn until I think like the 70, 80% mark of why she doesn't want to marry him. And so I feel like that kind of affected how I was seeing her this whole time. Like if we would have had that info sooner, I feel like it would have changed how I read the book. But since we don't find that out until later, like I just didn't have, I didn't understand her as well. And couldn't understand like why she's not getting with this guy. Like you guys have great chemistry, like what's keeping you apart? So yeah, that one was like, it was just okay. Like three stars. So moving on to the next. So then the book I just finished, my third book for the readathon is Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. I had an arc of this one. It's not out until June 28th. And so for this readathon, um, my ebooks that I'm reading, I wanted to read like arcs I have that are coming out in the summer and catch up on some of those. So this one I had out from NetGalley and it was my first time reading this author and I'm so glad I gave it a try because I ended up loving, loving, loving this story. Ended up giving this one five stars and yeah I just loved it a ton. All that I had heard about this one ahead of time was that the heroine is a respectable finishing school teacher by day and a gothic romance novelist by night and then that the hero was a widowed single father and so I was like sign me up I need all of that in my life. <laughs> So it starts out with the heroine Artemis. She's 29 and she's been a finishing school teacher for nine years. And so the first chapter starts out with um, Artemis getting a like talking down to from the headmistress that somebody found like her naughty books. And so she's in trouble again. And so she's kind of like, we already know she's a troublemaker. Um, and so then it cuts to her going to her room and she gets a letter from her like childhood best friend. And her friend had wanted to be a spinster and now said friend's father is like our family needs money or something like that and like you need to have a season like you need to come out to society and like you need to find a husband and so her friend writes to her and is like I need your help like please come help me with this season like you know never wanted to do this upon hearing this Artemis immediately quits her job and then goes off to go help her friend in London and so she ends up running into the hero Dominic they have a few like running ins and they don't know who one another is but they're both kind of like taken with one another Dominic he's known as the dastardly Duke of Dartmoor um, there's like rumors swirling around that he murdered his wife like his late wife um like years ago and so he kind of has been shunned by society with all of those rumors going around but he has his hands full right now with his 15 year old daughter Celeste um and he's like you know what I need to remarry I need to get an heir and I need somebody to help me with my daughter because she's you know that classic like teenage you know <laughs> teenage girl angst um that he needs help with so one of the times he runs into Artemis is actually at a bookshop and he's there to find books for his daughter um, because she's been caught reading some like scandalous naughty reads which actually end up being the books that Artemis writes under her pen name and so he's there to find some you know respectable books for his daughter. Artemis helps him out and offers up like you know some Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, I think she gives her North and South as well and uh, just some other books. And so they kind of form like a little friendship or like start to get to know one another. Artemis's aunt has been hounding her like since she's in town for the season. Like, you know, I want to get your sister married, but I also want you to get married first. And so Artemis gets an idea that she wants somebody to ruin her or fake ruin her. And so she goes to Dominic for it and is like, hey, like, you know, we we're already kind of like, they had like a little couple little like kissing and hooking up moments um, in some of the parties and stuff they've been at. So she's like, hey, like, can you help me out? And I want to stage my ruination, like for my aunt to walk in and find us. And like, she'll be so flabbergasted that I'm with you and like your reputation that she'll instead of you know forcing you to marry me or something like she's gonna not want the scandal associated with our family name so she will you know hide everything but I'll be you know ruined in her eyes and I can go off and start um, a college so Artemis's dream has always been to open up her own ladies like academic ladies college where you know women can learn the same things that men are learning and so that's that's always been her dream like that's where she puts the money from the books that she writes so she comes up with a deal and asks Dominic for help so like help me stage this like ruination like have my aunt walk in on this like making out or something and then and I'll help you with your daughter like because he's already told her you know I kind of want second opinion like about the, the education she's learning and maybe help with trying to understand her and so he, so they decide to help one another. And things take a turn for when they're doing the whole ruination um, 
set up like everybody walks in and they're you know making out and stuff that then Dominic kind of flips everything on its head so he kind of throws all of Artemis's ideas like out the window because in the moment um well over the book he's been starting to like kind of fall for her and like spending time with her and he thinks she's you know smart and funny and cool and obviously like you know they get along really well during the moment of them being ruined in front of the aunt and stuff he actually ends up proposing and <laughs> so <laughs> Artemis is like um excuse me sir like this was not part of the plan like what are you doing <laughs> and so he pulls her aside and is like hey like let's have an um engagement of convenience <laughs> like let's fake be engaged and we can help out each other further like in fact like I think he says he'll pay for her um, college that she wants to build and so he's gonna help her with that and he's like you know you've already met my daughter and have like my daughter's taken an interest to you like I think you can help her longer and plus you know be in his life a little bit longer and then um, I'll help you as well of course along the way you know they start having more little secret liaisons together and which by the way the scenes in here were like super hot and I loved it like all their times together I love their chemistry I liked seeing Artemis and his daughter Celeste like their growing friendship and kind of relationship so one of the problems that Dominic is having with Celeste his daughter is that she's been getting these like scandalous letters from like you know a lover or something and he's like she's 15 like this girl does not need to be having a guy she does not need to be talking about running off with somebody like and he can't figure out who it is so Artemis steps in and she like solves it like within an hour like finds out who the guy is and um like another teenager you know and so she gets involved and has a talk with Celeste and was like hey um because Celeste's mom passed away when she was younger so she's never had like you know a woman to talk to or look up to she doesn't have any friends and so Artemis steps in and I really liked their talk because it was super just like a really frank conversation about like you know love versus you know getting involved with a man and like the whole like you might think you love him but when you actually you know get into like a sexual relationship with him like there's consequences so she talks to her about birth control or like you know contraception at the time um she starts talking to her about like you know have you thought about like diseases you can get like there's all these other repercussions that can come from getting involved with a man that maybe you know in your like love haze you don't you don't realize like all these things you could be getting involved in and like you don't realize that a man could be taking advantage of you um because artemis has been taken advantage of in, in the past and so I just like really liked seeing the conversation she had with his daughter Celeste and you know that Celeste was open and willing to listen to her too. And then I liked seeing Artemis's, she, Artemis has a really complicated relationship like with her aunt and her own sister. Um, and I liked how it was handled. Like there was a few times in the book that some things I was like, oh, that's going to happen. And this is going to be like a thing. And you know, oh, this miscommunication is going to happen. And that's going to be like a thing. But then it ended up like not being or it was handled like in a really fresh, like well way, I thought. Um, and so I just liked seeing that. I also just really liked seeing Artemis and Dominic together. I liked their like openness and communication. Like it felt really refreshing to see how open they were with one another um, and sharing themselves with each other. I just felt their connection and their chemistry. I liked their banter. Like all of their interactions were just just really well done. Like I said, their steamy scenes were like super hot and I was here for it. And I'll definitely be picking up books from this author in the future. But yeah, that one is out on June 28th. I've also started the group book, which is Lion's Lady by Julie Garwood. This is my fourth read from Julie Garwood. I've always liked her books. Um, and so I didn't know anything about this one going in. I just knew it was the group pick, but we will see how it goes. Um, so far, I know I, like other people have already read it during the readathon and we're really loving it. So here's hoping I love it too. So I'm out running errands today in my Historical Romance Readers Club sweatshirt from Hello Lovely Box. I just love all of their merch, um, especially their historical romance stuff, but I have a rep code in my description. But anyways, I'm out today running some errands. We've been doing like some spring cleaning in our garage and in our house. And so I was donating some stuff and went in to check out the books while I was there as well. So I found a few. First one I found is Maya Banks' The Seduction of Highland Lass. I read all of her historical romances but I don't have them all on my shelf so I was glad to find this one there. If you haven't read any of Maya Banks's historicals she only has five of them like three are part of a series and then two more for another series but they're all medieval Highlander romances and I love them. And then the second book I grabbed was Marion Winterborn by Lisa Claypis. This is the second book in her Ravenel series. There is gorgeous Helen and Reese. This is one of my favorites in the series. And then I grabbed this, Karen Hawkins, um, The Taming of a Scottish Princess. So the name of it grabbed my attention and then I saw it has a step back right there. 
And then I also read the back and I was like, ooh. So it says, a determined explorer when famed Egyptologist Michael Hurst discovers that the infamous Hurst amulet is hidden in Scotland, he insists his trusted assistant, Miss Jane, accompany him north. Strangely, the usually unflappable Jane seems disturbed by their destination. Once her clan's princess, Jane fled the island years ago to avoid a forced marriage. Ooh. So now she must confront her secrets, including her feelings for her employer, the too handsome for his own good, Michael Hurst. Ooh, this one sounds really good. Love that he was an Egyptologist and they're searching for like some treasure. And then she's also the hidden um, missing princess. So this one sounds really good. So yep, those are my updates for now. Um, I am currently, like I said, reading The Lion's Lady by Julie Garwood. That's my physical book. And then I'll probably be starting another ebook or audio tonight. So I will see you in my next update. Okay, hi, and welcome back to another update from my car. It's been a few days. Um, I haven't mentioned on here, but I homeschool my daughter. And so this week was her last week of school. So we had like a field trip to go to, and we had um, just a lot of like wrapping up the year, me doing grades and all that. So I haven't updated um, in a few days, but I've read quite a few books, got through quite a few audiobooks and also some ARCs, um, some ebooks I had out. So I wanted to do a little update of those. So the fourth book I read was How the Wallflower Was Won by Eva Lee. This is her second book in her Last Chance Scoundrel series. Um, I read an arc of this one. It's not out until September 27th. And so in this series, it's been following three heroes, um, three friends. Two of them are brothers and one of them is their friend who was actually supposed to marry the two brothers' sister. And in the first book, he ended up jilting her on their wedding day and the friends had helped him because they were like, you guys don't look happy, like you need to get out of this. So their families were both upset <laughs> and decided to tell all three of the heroes that, you know, you guys need to grow up, mature, find yourselves respectable brides and get married within a year or we're cutting you off like financially. So it's been each of them finding their bride. So this is the second book in the series. So in this book, not only does the hero need a wife, so he isn't cut off, but the heroine actually needs a husband as well. The heroine's been trying to get into this like academic type society. And when she went there in the beginning of the book, the guys who ran it, they told her, you know, like no women are accepted, especially like an, an unmarried woman, like no way are we letting you in um, to our kind of like boys club. And so she asked, okay, well, like, what if I'm married? Like, then is, can I have a chance? And so he's like, you know, if you if you're married, then you have the slimmest chance, like we'll give you the slimmest chance of getting in. So she's like, OK, I'll take that and ran with it. In this book, the hero's name is Finn. He's the brother of the hero of the first book, and he has eight months left to find himself a bride. So at the beginning of the story, he's like, you know, I need to find a bride. But he actually doesn't think very highly of himself. Um, he has a learning disability, like with reading and writing. And so he thinks he'll have a better chance or an easier chance finding a bride for their friend Dom, which is going to be the hero of the third book. And so the actually like the first third of this book was Finn trying to set up Tabitha the heroine with Dom, his friend. And so this one I ended up giving three stars. I really loved Finn's character, but I actually found myself really bored during the read. Um, I didn't feel any connection between him and Tabitha. Like I was saying, the first third of the story is him trying to set her up with Dom, who's going to be the hero of the third book. It was more of Finn trying to prove to Tabitha and Dom what a good match they'd be um, instead of like, this girl could be for you. And Finn, because of his learning disability, he thinks Tabitha is just like far superior, way smarter um, than him and like would never give him a chance. But yeah, it ended up being a marriage of convenience and then nothing was really standing between the couple. Like they get married early on. Um, for her to get into the society and him to like you know appease his family needing a bride but then they get along really well like they're sleeping together already like i just didn't understand what was keeping them from this being like a real marriage you know because it's like okay you're already you're already married you're already getting along like where's the angst where's the i need more you know and then the third act conflict um tabitha gets upset with finn and this is what made like the stars just go downhill for me because like i don't mind a low angst read sometimes like it's not my preferred type of read but like I'll read it obviously um but the third act conflict is what definitely brought this book down for me so Tabitha ends up getting upset with Finn um about something and like it came out of left field she gets upset about something he says and storms off and like then she lets him and us the reader know that like this triggered her like of something that happened in the past with her like something was said with her in the past so this like really um, irked her and like that's what set her off to like explode on him she kind of brings up um, things about him that he you know told her it was just all a little bit much for me like 
especially since he had no idea like this was gonna set you off and like it was very minor like what felt like it in the book but there were fun times like Finn is great I loved him as a hero um he goes out of his way a lot to please and make Tabitha happy like he has some fun moments like on their wedding night he finds an inn that has a library because he knows she loves to read um of course there's some carriage sex like there's lots of dirty talk like there were good times it just um yeah this one just didn't work for me as well but that said, I'm really looking forward to Dom's book, which is going to be the third book in the series. Like, I've been looking forward to this book in the series since probably the first chapter of the first book. So, like, I'm just, you know, wanting to get to that one already. And the fifth book I read was another arc. It was To Catch a Raven um, by Beverly Jenkins, the third book in her Women Who Dare series. And it's the last book in the series as well. Um, this one's an arc and it comes out on August 23rd. So this story says, the little blurb was like, this story is a fearless grifter heroine who goes undercover to reclaim the stolen Declaration of Independence. So honestly, I read everything that Beverly Jenkins writes. Like I love her books. I love her storytelling and like the history that she weaves into her stories. So I ended up giving three and a half stars. It wasn't my favorite in the series or my favorite Beverly Jenkins read. But like, again, I said, I'll read everything she writes. So in this one, the heroine is Raven and she comes from a long line of grifters and like she couldn't be prouder of it. Um, like her family has counterfeiters, gamblers, swindlers, imposters, like all the things going on in her family. And so she has a huge extensive family. So the first half of the book was really focusing more on her family. Um, the hero's name is Braxton and he ends up getting partnered up with Raven because the government, like a Pinkerton agent comes to them and is like, hey, the Declaration of Independence or a copy of it was stolen. Like we need you guys to go undercover and like go and get it back. So the agent came to them because both of their families, you know, have been known to get away with certain crimes and things. So the first half of the book is really learning more of like the history and background of both Raven and Braxton. We find out that Braxton's father was an art forger in the past and he actually was once in love with Raven's mother and they actually get like their own little second chance moment um, romance in this book which was really sweet. Just a little side story of the main story. The blurb makes this book sound like it's going to be more focused on the action and searching for the item. Like it's actually more on the romance and kind of like a slow burn story which I mean I loved the romance it was super steamy super great chemistry like I loved it really romantic moments but I just went in expecting more action adventure from the description when the first half of the book was they hadn't even made it to the house yet of where they're going to go looking for the item I was just kind of like okay like I'm along for the ride getting to know these characters but like where's what it was described as you know and then on the same hand like I love Beverly Jenkins I love her writing the strong heroines and like the heroes who just fall at their heels I love to see it but it does sound wild just you know talking about how the romance and chemistry was great and like where was the action and adventure but it was just the fact that like it was described as being more action-packed that I was expecting that and so when it like I loved the romance between Braxton and Raven but I was just expecting at the time more action <laughs> in the story for the main plot once they do make it to the house of the man that's um, suspected of stealing the Declaration of Independence. Braxton and Raven end up being fake spouses there. She poses as the housekeeper and then he poses as like the valet slash driver and also um, yeah they're like fake married. And then like all of Beverly Jenkins books she always has ties or like they exist in the same world as all of her other series so this one was super fun because it has ties to the Levesque family. It also has um, distant ties to Pilar's family from Destiny's Captive, the third book in the Destiny's trilogy. There's also a character in here that's featured in Winds of the Storm as well. So while not a bad book I just went in expecting something different and then was given a really beautiful romance in the end. So like three and a half stars. Um, again, it's out on August 23rd. And then the sixth book I read was the group book pick. It's The Lion's Lady by Julie Garwood. And this one I have lots of mixed feelings about. Um, I did not end up loving it. I gave it two stars. I just really had a hard time with this book. Like I was honestly bored with it. I'd never wanted to pick it up. I ended up picking or starting it before the previous arcs that I started and then would go back to those instead to read because I just wasn't having a fun time with this one which was sad because I had seen so many great reviews about this and so many people loving it like who were picking it up for the readathon beforehand and so I was expecting so much more so some parts with the heroine it just kind of made me feel I don't know icky or like uncomfortable so it starts off with a prologue and the heroine is from England but she ends up being raised in a Dakota village in the Black Hills of America 
And so once she comes back to England, um, when she's older, she has a lot of different ways of living and like culture and the way she says things are very different than the aristocrats in the Regency era. So I don't find that that premise aged very well for the story. Um, it just, like I said, it just made me felt uncomfortable in parts and like, I didn't think anything was funny that was supposed to be funny, I think. Um, it just, I don't know, it kind of felt weird to me. And then also nothing stood out for me with the romance or the hero. Like I was just honestly bored. And if it wasn't for the readathon, I probably would have put, like I would never would have picked this one up. So I was really surprised that I didn't end up liking this one because I have read three other Julie Garwood books in the past. I've read The Secret, The Bride, and The Wedding, and all of those I really loved. So I don't know, maybe I should just stick to her Highlander romances from now on and skip these Regency, sometimes in America, like set ones. Seventh book I read, I picked up The Viscount Made Me Do It. It's the second book in Diana Quincy's A Clandestine Affair um, series. But I picked up because I wanted to get to the third book in the series, which is going to be the next book I talk about because that's the book club pick this month for the Rake Appreciation Society. Um, so I wanted to get to the third book, so I decided to read the second book first since I've been meaning to get to it. So this book I ended up giving three stars. I really loved the heroine Hannah. She's of Arab descent and she's a bone setter which I thought was so cool and so unique to hear about um, her job. I've never read like a bone setter um, heroine before and so I thought that was really cool. And the hero I really loved him too. His parents were killed in the past and there's always been like rumors swirling that he was involved or he killed them. And so when something comes to light in the present day, um, kind of pointing to the killer and he finds that Hannah is wearing like a necklace or something that his mother wore on the day she died, he sets out to find everything he can um, to try to find the killer of his parents. And then also he gets wrapped up with Hannah as well. So when the romance definitely took a backseat to the mystery um, kind of murder element of the plot. And while I did find the mystery part really intriguing, I also just wanted more of the romance between Hannah and Griff because what we did get of their characters, like I really enjoyed them and I just wanted more of their romance. So that one was just three stars. The next one I rolled into, which was my eighth book for the readathon, was The Marquess Makes His Move by Di Diana Quincy. And this is the third book in the Clandestine Affairs series. This is the one that is the May book club pick for the Rake Appreciation Society, um, put on by Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life and Jen from The Book Refuge. And this one I liked a lot more than the second book of the series. Like this third book is probably my favorite in the series. I ended up giving it four stars. This one, the heroine Rose, is London's most renowned map maker, but like nobody knows she's actually the one making the maps. They actually think it's her husband because he, you know, signs his name on them. And then Brandon, the hero, he's a half Arab Marquess, and he ends up posing as the new footman for um, Rose and her husband's house. And then her husband assigns Brandon to be Rose's footman. So they end up spending a lot of time together. I really liked their friendship and bond that they started to form while he's posing as this footman in their house. His identity does end up staying hidden for like 70% of the book, which I was surprised by. There were also some twists and like plot moments in here that had me surprised while reading it. Um, I was really engrossed in the story, like for the first, I'd say 75-ish mar percent mark. Um, but then some choices and happened and I felt like once she knew Brandon was the Marquess and some of the choices that Rose's character ma makes, it just felt very out of character from her. Like it definitely felt like she changed and the last 25% of the book I just had a hard time with. But that said, I think the good of the book, like the first, you know, three fourths of it definitely outweighed the bad. And so that's why I gave it four stars. I do think that Diana Quincy's writing style though is really easy to consume. Um, she's not a favorite author for me, but I would recommend her to others because I feel like her writing style is just pretty straightforward and easy to get into. And then the next book I read was Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. This is the third book in the Wild Winchesters series and it's an arc so it doesn't come out until July 26th. This one I ended up giving three stars, which I'm pretty sad about because I really enjoyed the first book in the series and loved book two in the series, which was um, The Perks of Loving a Wallflower, which like one of my favorite reads of last year. This book, the romance, sadly was not anywhere near on the same level as the first two books in the series for me personally. So the Winchester siblings, they're all like a found family. They were adopted by this Baron who passed away before book one. Um, he took in like the six kids, I believe there's six of them, the six kids. 
and they're kind of like a hodgepodge of everybody can do something like some of them can do for like forge items one of them's into art one of them's like the map maker one of them can do disguises and costumes like they all have they fight they train so their um, goal is to help other people in need of their aid this book Graham he is the brother who has like the most he has all the intelligence like he keeps notebooks and scrapbooks of like he knows everything like everything about everything he'll know so the book starts out with him decoding some messages like in the scandal sheets and he believes it's from a royal needing help which his lifelong dream has been like to be a royal like he's obsessed with royalty and which I thought was super cute um and so he goes out to find this you know he wants to save this like royal princess and be a knight in shining armor <laughs> actually ends up running to Cooney instead and she's not a princess but she's a companion to a princess of this like foreign country and she's always dreamed of becoming a royal guardswoman like the first one in the country um or all of the men in her family have been royal guardsmen and so it's her she's determined to become a royal guardswoman I loved her as a heroine she's super strong super determined I love how she trained and just blended in with the Winchesters right away um, we see a lot of time with her and some of the sisters in the family. So it was a lot of fun seeing all of the siblings, um, all their family interactions, and just like how seamlessly Cooney blended into their family as well. But while I loved all of that, what was lacking was any um, like individual time alone with Graham and Cooney. I just like we didn't really see any of that happening. This was another case of I really loved the characters on their own. I loved Graham. He was a super cute and adorable hero. And then Cooney was a really strong and determined heroine. I loved both of them on their own. And I just wish we had more focus on their romance because by the 85% mark, when all of a sudden they're declaring love and like proposing to one another, I just never saw the buildup of this romance. And so I didn't find it believable at all. But that said, it definitely delivers on the found family and that like whole cozy sweet vibes that the Winchesters give off and I'll continue to read in this series this one was just a disappointment for me and then the latest book I read was Nighthawk by Beverly Jenkins I gave this one four stars and this one is a lot of fun so the hero he goes by Nighthawk he's also gone by Preacher but his real name is Ian um, he's been featured in some of the previous books from Beverly Jenkins like I just read The Taming of Jesse Rose like a month or two ago and so I had seen him in that book and was really looking forward to his book because he's kind of like this mysterious um, bounty hunter. Ian is actually a widowed hero. His wife who was like the love of his life she was murdered um, a few years back in when the story picks up and so he never thought he'd love again um, and he's just focused all of his energy and time on being a bounty hunter and like his mission is to bring others to justice. He ends up getting tasked with bringing in the heroine Maggie. So it was really fun to see Maggie and Ian's relationship grow. Like they're kind of like on a little road trip together while he's bringing her to the town that she's going to be apprehended in. Um, it was fun seeing their chemistry and build up. Ian like immediately falls for her, which was so fun to see because he was even surprised by it because he never thought he could love or would have those feelings again. So he falls really hard, really fast. Like with all Beverly Jenkins heroines, they're very sassy and tough and spirited. And I loved Ian um, watching Maggie and kind of like she'd always just catch him off guard because he wasn't expecting her to say certain things um, or do certain things. And so he's just kind of like amazed and also like laughs at the things she says and does around him. And this one takes place like in Kansas and then eventually Wyoming where Ian lives at and he invites um, Maggie to go back with him like halfway into the story. And my favorite part of the story was definitely the first half, like their adventure along the way of when he eventually has to turn her over to authorities, like all that build up, their chemistry um, and passion along the way was so believable and just like a really fun time. You even get to see Ian, he gets a little like possessive when there's some other guys around Maggie. Um, and he, like, at the end of the day, just wants to take care of her. And so it was really sweet to see. The latter half of the story did end up slowing down. But, like, I just love Beverly Jenkins' writing. And, like, I could read her books forever. And so I didn't mind it as much, even though the first half was definitely my favorite. And then I'm currently reading Mr. Impossible by Loretta Chase. This one was a wreck from Jess from Peace Love Books. She read it at the end of last year and it immediately... Uh, grabbed my attention as well so it's based on the mummy 
Um, it's so it's set in Egypt. The heroine is like a widowed, grumpy scholar, and then the hero is like this sunshiny hero who he's like the fourth son of an earl, and like he's just the family disaster. Like he's always getting himself in trouble. Like at the beginning of the story, he's locked up in prison, and the heroine Daphne comes to get him out of prison because she's like, "Hey, I need help finding my brother. Like he has been kidnapped. Like I need somebody to help me to help me go rescue him." <laughs> so Daphne is a super fun heroine. She's really into hieroglyphics and trying to solve them using the Rosetta Stone, like the mummy, but in a book. So it's like action adventure. Somebody stole some of their papyrus and like things she was using to try to solve the hieroglyphs like it's them searching for her brother who got himself in trouble um the banter of between Daphne and Rupert the hero like from the very beginning it was just such a fun time like I love their banter and like the way Loretta Chase writes them is just so good can't wait to see where this one goes I am like halfway into it right now and so far it's just a super fun romp in Egypt like action and adventure and a little bit of bantering and romance that was my update for the books I read over the last few days um we do still have today and tomorrow for the readathon and the readathon ends on Sunday but we're actually going to be going out of town for a few days um so I'm trying to get my readathon wrapped up on Saturday tomorrow so I will be back to update later with the last books I end up reading so today is Saturday and it is the last day for me for the historical romance readathon and I have finished um a few more books so I wanted to update those the last one I was reading was Mr. Impossible by Loretta Chase I ended up giving this one three and a half stars I think I said in my previous clip how I really liked the action adventure um, a road trip that the hero and heroine were going on together but the middle kind of started dragging for me and it just got a little slow there was a lot of like secondary characters that I wasn't as invested in and I just wanted more of the fun romp that we were having at the beginning of the story um but yeah 3.5 stars for this one next book I ended up finishing was Duke Most Wicked by Lenora Bell this is the third book in her Wallflowers versus Rogues and I read an arc of it it's out on September 27th I ended up giving this one five stars I really loved it um it's my favorite Lenora Bell that I've read so far and definitely my favorite in this series it's one of the class difference romance with the hero being a duke and the heroine being the music teacher that he hires for his five sisters Viola lives with her father who is a composer and he actually is losing his hearing so he deals with that in the story. Um, Viola is actually a composer herself and so to see her composing some of her music as well that she writes under a um, male pseudonym. Brandon is the Duke and he grew up always wondering why his father hated him. Um, the prologue starts off with a really heart-wrenching sad story of him asking his mom when he's like 12 years old you know why does my father hate me um how come I can never do anything to live up to his standards um so we get to see that in the prologue his father also beats him as a child we don't see the abuse on page but it's told to us that it happens so then when Brandon is young he decides that to stick it to his father he's going to become the worst heir in the world since his father already thinks the worst of him so he starts acting out um, living life to the fullest becoming the wicked duke so then the story cuts to 16 years later and he's now 28 and he's been living life to the fullest um spending money gambling like out on the town all the things um and so now he needs a rich wife so Brandon decides that not only this season is he going to find himself a rich bride, but he's going to find husbands for all five of his sisters. We get to see Viola. She is the music teacher for um, Brandon's sisters, and she gets along really well with all the girls. It was a really fun seeing their relationship and bond. They have really good friendships. I liked all the girls. Like, they all have their own personalities, and it was really fun to see the whole family together. But Viola, she's always had a crush on Brandon, and then she decides that she doesn't want his sisters having to marry men that he chooses for them so she makes a deal with Brandon and says that you know let me chaperone your sisters and I'll make sure they're up to no trouble for the season and let them find their own husbands. Brandon and Viola end up spending a lot of time together um they both kind of had feelings for one another and so you know they're gonna act upon them. <laughs> Just really loved seeing these two together their banter was really fun the chemistry was really believable um right from the start. And I just love these two together. Like the angst in this one was really good. Usually in the past, the other Lenora Bells I read, they've been kind of lower angst, um, light, fun, rompy style reads. But this one was like angsty. It hit all the emotions. Like I loved the banter, the wittiness. There was some humor in here. And I just really loved this one. 
she's also teaching his sisters on the piano forte. We see a lot of her composing her music, um, playing the piano. Um, let's see, there's a really fun proposal in this one involving gravestones. Um, there's also a custom made piano bench for, you know, reasons. And yeah, this one was just a lot of fun. I couldn't get enough of the couple and their families and it is out on September 27th. So the last book I'm reading for the readathon is Through the Storm by Beverly Jenkins. There's that gorgeous cover. So this book takes place um, in Georgia. It's 1864. The heroine is Sable and the hero is Raymond Levesque. This is the first book in the Lovec series. So it was really fun reading this one because I found out that the heroine Sable, her brother is Ryan Fontaine, who is the hero of Forbidden, one of Beverly Jenkins' other books. So this book starts out Sable, she's enslaved, and she actually ends up escaping at the beginning of the book and taking off. And so one of her aunts tells her before she flees that their family descends from African queens and there's like a prophecy or fate involved with Sable's story. And so Sable ends up meeting with Harriet Tubman, who's posing as a different woman of the time, and they end up at a war um, campground where she meets Major Raymond Levesque, the hero of the story. So I loved seeing their chemistry in this book. Um, he's more of a possessive alpha hero, which I'm always down for. <laughs> and she's the type of heroine who challenges him and he really likes seeing that. I also liked seeing Sable. She starts assisting some of the doctors in the campground. So she's involved with a lot of kind of the more gory details um, with the injured soldiers who are coming in. Like she helps with amputations, staunching war wounds, and just um, providing care and support for some of the soldiers who come into the camp injured. We also see at one point in the story her brother Ryan is at the same campground and it was fun seeing Raymond get like a little bit possessive and of her spending time with her brother because he didn't realize they're siblings at first. But yeah this is one of Beverly Jenkins early books and I mean I love everything she writes so this one I'm having a really fun time with. Okay, it's Saturday and I'm here to wrap up the Historical Romance Readathon. Um, the readathon actually ends tomorrow on Sunday, but we're going out of town for a few days, so I wanted to wrap up mine today. I had a great time with this readathon. It's always my favorite one to participate in. I've participated in all the rounds of the Historical Romance Readathon, um, so thank you so much to the hosts, uh, Jess from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Markably Lisa. I always love seeing everybody participating on Instagram and interacting with everyone, finding new reads, um, gushing over reads that I loved too that people pick up. So without further ado, I will do a wrap up really quickly of the 13 books I read for the readathon. So at the beginning of this readathon, I had 15 books on my TBR and I was able to get through 13 of them. Surprisingly, I stuck to my TBR and didn't divert at all. So the first book I read was When a Girl Loves an Earl by Elisa Braden. I gave this one five stars. Twelve Nights as His Mistress, a novella by Elisa Braden. I gave this one three stars. Up All Night with the Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. This is an arc out on June 28th. I gave this one five stars. How the Wallflower Was Won by Eva Lee. This is an arc out September 27th and I gave this one three stars. To Catch a Raven by Beverly Jenkins. This is an arc out August 23rd and I gave this one 3.5 stars. I next read The Group Pick which was The Lion's Lady by Julie Garwood. I gave this one two stars. By Count Made Me Do It by Diana Quincy. Gave this one three stars. The Marquess Makes His Move by Diana Quincy. Gave this one four stars. Nobody's Princess by Erica Ridley. This is an arc out July 26th and I gave this one three stars. Nighthawk by Beverly Jenkins. I gave this one four stars. Mr. Impossible by Loretta Chase. I gave this one 3.5 stars. Duke Most Wicked by Lenora Bell. This is an arc out September 27th and I gave this one five stars. And the last, the 13th book I read was Through the Storm by Beverly Jenkins and I gave this one 4.5 stars. So those were my reads for the Historical Romance Readathon. I had a great time. Let me know in the comments if you participated in the readathon, if you had a favorite read, um, or if you've read any of the books that I read during this readathon and what your thoughts were, or if you put any of them on your TBR, um, let me know. So thanks so much for watching my vlog. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.